My life's pretty straightforward, I'm all about fitness, health, and now, apparently, drama. I'm 26, juggling my job as a fitness trainer and my health blog. That's how I bumped into Mark at the sports center, a connection that quickly turned into something special. He's got this vibe that's hard to ignore, and before we knew it, we were deep in what you'd call a whirlwind romance. Now, let me set the scene for you. It was a hot summer day, and I was meeting Mark's family for the first time. I was nervous but excited. Dressed in a simple, knee-length dress with short sleeves, nothing flashy, but apparently, enough to kick off a storm. Mark had prepped me about his family, loving, a bit traditional, and protective of each other. He mentioned his mom, Linda, with a tone that I couldn't quite figure out at the time. She's got strong opinions, but don't take it to heart, he said. Little did I know, those were words of warning. We walked into their family home, and there they were. Alex, Mark's younger brother, was the first to greet us, a hearty guy with a welcoming smile. Then came Linda. The air felt like it dropped a few degrees. Her eyes scanned me from head to toe, lingering on my arms. Yes, my arms. Bare because it was summer and it was sweltering outside. Is this how you dress to meet your future mother-in-law? A bit bold, don't you think? Linda's voice was colder than I expected, laced with a disapproval that felt like a slap. I was taken aback, my mind racing for the right words. Mark squeezed my hand, a silent form of support. I cleared my throat. Well, it's summer, you know? It's quite hot outside, and I thought this was pretty decent and comfortable. Linda scoffed. Comfortable or not, it's about first impressions. I would have expected something more, appropriate. Mark jumped in, trying to smooth things over. Mom, come on, it's really hot today. Eric is dressed fine. Let's not start off on the wrong foot. But Linda wasn't having any of it. I'm just saying, Mark. It's about respect. But fine, let's have dinner. Dinner was a tense affair. Conversations flowed around me, but Linda's earlier comments hung over the table like a dark cloud. Alex tried to lighten the mood, cracking jokes and sharing stories, which I was thankful for. Mark kept shooting me reassuring looks, but the damage was done. After dinner, while helping with the dishes, Linda cornered me in the kitchen. Listen, dear, I'm just looking out for my son. He's a good boy, and I don't want him to make a mistake. I was floored. A mistake? Linda, I love Mark, and I'm not here to play games. I don't know what I did to give you a bad impression, but that's not me. She just shook her head. We'll see. Time tells all truths. The ride home was quiet. Mark apologized for his mom's behavior, but I could tell he was upset too. She can be protective, but this was too much. I'm sorry, Erica. I sighed, leaning back in the seat. It's okay, Mark. But if this is how it's going to be, we've got a rocky road ahead. The wedding planning was in full swing, and Mark and I were all in, picking out decorations, tasting cakes, and of course, finding the perfect attire. I fell in love with this stunning dress, sleek and a tad revealing, but nothing outrageous. Well, at least I thought so until Linda caught a glimpse. You plan on wearing that in front of the whole family, Erica? She blurted out the first time she saw it. Looks like you're aiming for a beach party rather than a wedding. I tried to laugh it off. It's just modern, Linda. Plus, it's going to be a warm day, and I want to feel comfortable. Mark squeezed my hand, signaling not to start a battle we couldn't win. But Linda's frown said it all. She wasn't pleased, muttering about tradition and decency as she walked off. I thought, if a dress could stir the pot, what lay ahead? After the initial clash with Linda, things settled into a tense kind of normalcy. I threw myself into work and my blog, which was my slice of sanity. My blog and social media were my territory, a place where I felt in control and could share my passion for fitness and health. It never crossed my mind that this very passion would stir the pot once again. One evening, Mark and I were lounging on the couch, a rare moment of downtime. He was scrolling through his phone, a frown slowly forming on his face. Babe, we need to talk, 
he said, his tone serious. I sat up. What's up? Something wrong? He handed me his phone, showing my Instagram profile. There, in the comments of my latest post, were a bunch of supportive and some flirty comments. Normal stuff, I thought. Okay, and? I was confused. It's my mom, Mark sighed. She's been going through your posts, making a big deal out of every single guy comment. She's spinning it like you're, I don't know, inviting attention? I felt a rush of anger. You've got to be kidding me. It's Instagram, for crying out loud. People comment. That's how it works. Yeah, I know, but she's convinced there's more to it. She's telling everyone who'll listen that you're not faithful. It's ridiculous. I grabbed the phone from him, scrolling through the comments. Nothing out of the ordinary. Yet, Linda had managed to twist it into something sordid. So, what? Am I supposed to police who comments on my posts now? No, of course not. But maybe we could limit who can comment or something. Just until this blows over? Mark's suggestion was well-meaning, but infuriating. I snapped. So I have to censor my account, because your mom has a twisted view of me? Hell no. That's not happening. Fast forward through the Instagram saga, with Linda twisting my every move into a scandal, things only got stickier. Alex, bless him, started giving me rides home from work, since his office was just a block away from the gym. It was innocent convenience, but not to Linda's eyes. At a family dinner one evening, with the tension thick in the air, Linda started her usual insinuations. Nice of Alex to play chauffeur, isn't it? She said, her voice dripping with implication. Seems like he's always there when Mark isn't. Mark's jaw tensed, and I saw Alex stiffen. Mom, what are you implying? Mark's voice had that warning edge, but Linda was on a roll. Oh, nothing. Just making conversation. She replied, feigning innocence while her eyes darted between me and Alex. It was like a match to the fuse. Stop it, Mom. You're out of line. Alex snapped, clearly at his limit. The argument escalated from there, with Mark caught in the middle, torn between his brother and his mother's accusations. The drive home was silent, the weight of the accusations hanging between us. I couldn't believe Linda would stoop so low, using Alex's kindness as a weapon against me. The whole mess with Linda reached a boiling point I never thought possible. After the latest stunt she pulled, accusing me of messing around because Alex gave me a few rides home, I hit my limit. I told Mark flat out. Your mom's not welcome in our house anymore. I can't do it. She's crossed too many lines. You'd think I'd declared war. Linda went ballistic when she heard about the ban. But honestly? I was past caring. Her constant digs and accusations were bad enough, but what came next was the real kicker. A couple of months down the line, I found out I was pregnant. Joy turned to chaos real quick. Linda, upon hearing the news, decided to spin a new tale, telling Mark. She could be carrying anyone's child. How do you know it's yours? With all those men at her gym, who knows? Hearing that venom from his own mom, Mark started to change. He'd listen, really listen, to her poison. I could see it in his eyes, the doubt. It was like a slap in the face. Our once solid bond was now filled with this unspoken tension, eating away at us. One night, after overhearing another one of their phone calls, I confronted Mark. So, what? You think I'm cheating on you? That this baby isn't yours? My voice was sharp, a mix of hurt and anger. Mark looked torn, a shadow of himself. I don't know what to think anymore, Erica. My mom, she's got all these ideas, and... And what? You're gonna take her word over mine? Over everything we've built? I cut him off, disbelief coloring every word. He didn't answer. Just shuffled his feet and looked anywhere but at me. That silence spoke volumes, more than any argument ever could. Things between us got colder after that. Conversations were clipped, filled with tension. It was like living with a stranger. The joy of our upcoming baby was overshadowed by this cloud of suspicion and doubt. 
When our baby boy came into the world with his fair hair and bright blue eyes, I thought maybe, just maybe, things would start to look up. But I couldn't have been more wrong. As he grew, his features became even more pronounced, making him the spitting image of a golden-haired angel. Problem was, Mark, my husband, is as brunette and dark-eyed as they come, which, of course, gave Linda, the ever-suspicious mother-in-law, more ammo for her accusations. I even dug up my old childhood photos to show Linda and Mark, hoping it would shut down the whole ridiculous argument. Look, I said, pointing to a picture of me at five, blonde and blue-eyed, just like our son. It's genetics, Linda. Can't you see the resemblance? Linda just sniffed, unimpressed, her eyes narrowing. Convenient, isn't it? That your genes decided to pop up now. And Alex being blonde doesn't help your case. Mark stood there, caught in the middle, his face a mix of confusion and hurt. The tension was unbearable. Things hit the fan at our son's first birthday party. With all the guests cooing over the baby, Linda couldn't resist making a scene. This child looks nothing like my son. Everyone can see it. We need a DNA test to prove who the father really is, she announced out loud, making everyone uncomfortable. I was livid, my face burning with embarrassment and anger. Are you out of your mind, Linda? Accusing me in front of everyone? No way am I doing some test just because your paranoia's got the better of you. I shot back, my voice dripping with indignation. It was humiliating, being accused like that, especially in front of friends and family. But then, Mark stepped in, and not in the way I hoped. Actually, we're doing it. He said, his voice cold, a hardness in his eyes I hadn't seen before. If you've got nothing to hide, then there's no issue. We do the test, or we're done. I can't be married to someone I don't trust. I was floored. You serious right now? You're choosing your mom's crazy over me, over your son? He didn't budge, didn't even seem to flinch at my words. It's not just my mom. There's too much doubt, too much talk. The test ends it one way or another. And until then? I asked, my heart in my throat, already dreading the answer. Pack your bags. Stay somewhere else. I can't look at you, not now, not with these doubts. His words cut through me, leaving a chill in their wake. So, there I was, packing up a storm, my hands shaking with a cocktail of rage and hurt. Our baby boy, oblivious to it all, watched with wide, innocent eyes as his world, and mine, crumbled. I left, heading to the only place I could think of, my mom's. My mom was waiting, arms wide open, when I got there. I barely got through the door, before I broke down. He's kicked us out, mom. Over some DNA test, Linda's convinced him we need. My mom was all fury, ready to storm over there and give Mark a piece of her mind. Over my dead body, she said, but I stopped her. No, it's, it's not worth it. Not right now. I spent the night going over every moment, trying to figure out where it all went wrong. How did we get here, from being so in love to questioning our baby's paternity? And Alex, caught up in this mess for no good reason other than Linda's spite. After the whole mess at my son's first birthday, word got around fast. It felt like the whole city knew about Linda's accusations before the party favors were even picked up. My friends, my mom's friends, even the neighbors who'd watched me grow up, were all whispering behind my back. It was like living in a bad dream. Fed up and desperate to clear my name, I decided to go ahead with the DNA test. Picking up the phone, I called Mark, my voice steady, but my hands shaking. I'll do the test, I said, cutting straight to the chase. There was a pause on the other end, before Mark replied, his voice too calm for my liking. I knew you'd come around. It's for the best. Arriving at the clinic, I was a bundle of nerves. Mark was there, looking like he carried the weight of the world on his shoulders. And, to my surprise, so was Alex. Why is he here? I asked, nodding toward Alex, unable to keep the edge out of my voice. Mark didn't meet my eyes as he answered. There's been talk, that you and Alex might have, you know. He's getting tested too. 
I felt my blood boil at the implication. You think I'd, with your brother? That's how little you trust me? Before Mark could reply, the specialist called us in, breaking the tension for a moment. Inside, the specialist laid it out straight. Determining paternity can be complicated when potential fathers are siblings. We'll need additional samples from everyone involved, including from you, Erica, to ensure accuracy. So, we all gave our samples, each of us lost in our own thoughts. I could tell Alex was mortified, Mark was conflicted, and me? I was just angry. Angry that it had come to this, angry at Linda, angry at Mark for letting his mother's paranoia get this far. With the tests done, we were told it'd be a couple of weeks before we got the results. Those weeks were the longest of my life. I wasn't just sitting around, though. I made a few calls, talked to a man who promised he could help me out in a delicate matter. I didn't know if it would lead anywhere, but I had to try something. The waiting was torture, not knowing what the future held for me, my son, and even Mark and Alex. But I clung to the hope that once the results were in, I could start to put this whole nightmare behind me. The tension in Linda's living room was almost a physical presence, wrapping its icy fingers around my heart as we waited. The grand reveal was about to happen, with everyone playing their part in this twisted family drama. My son clutched my hand, sensing the storm brewing but not understanding its cause. Linda, ever the master of ceremonies in her own mind, dramatically sliced open the envelope containing the DNA test results. Her anticipation was palpable, hoping, no doubt, for a scandal to validate her accusations. But the moment she peeked inside, her expression faltered, her disappointment clear as day. The father is Mark, she announced, her voice losing its usual sharpness. Mark, who had been a bundle of nerves, visibly relaxed, a smug smile spreading across his face. He turned to me, his arrogance returning full force. Well, there you have it. No harm done, right? You can come back home now. His words ignited something fierce within me, a mix of disbelief and anger. I couldn't hold back a bitter laugh. Come back? After all this? You must be joking. He blinked, taken aback by my reaction. But, you're innocent, Erica. Isn't that what you wanted? That's when I played my hand, pulling out the divorce papers I'd kept hidden away. The silence that followed was deafening as I laid them on the table. Mark's face went from competent to pale, a look of sheer panic taking over. What's this? Why? Divorce papers, I replied, the words tasting like freedom. And here's why. I then produced the photos, the undeniable proof of Mark's infidelity, captured in vivid detail by the private detective I'd secretly hired. Mark's transformation was pitiful. From confident to broken, he started to babble apologies, his earlier facade crumbling. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. Please, let's talk about this. Talk? I scoffed, my voice cold. You dragged my name through the mud, let your mother accuse me of the worst, and all the while, you were the one cheating. There's nothing to talk about. Linda attempted to intervene, her earlier eagerness for drama now replaced by a desperate need to salvage the situation. Now, dear, let's all calm down. We can fix this. Fix this? I cut her off sharply. Your son's a cheat. And you, you're no better for stirring all this trouble based on lies. After I laid out the proof of Mark's betrayal for all to see, the room turned into a battleground of broken bonds and shattered illusions. Linda, with a look of sheer disgust, couldn't tear her eyes away from the photos spread out like a hand of betrayal on the coffee table. I'm not just walking away, Mark. I'll be demanding alimony and compensation for this, treachery, I declared, my voice steady but seething with anger. Mark's face drained of color, his earlier bravado evaporating into thin air. You can't be serious, he stammered, looking from the photos to his mother seeking some sort of refuge or rescue. Linda, ever the matriarch, tried to salvage what little control she thought she had. Oh, please. She was never right for you. She would have cheated on you sooner or later. You're better off without her. 
That's when Alex, who'd been quietly simmering with rage, stepped in. Enough! He exploded, his voice echoing off the walls. I'm done with all of this. With both of you. He looked pointedly at his mother and brother. After everything you put her through, based on nothing but your own twisted suspicions, I'm out. Linda turned to him, her face a mask of shock and desperation. Alex, please, don't say that. I, I was just trying to protect our family. Protect? Alex scoffed, his scorn palpable. Is that what you call this? Destroying relationships, spreading lies? I can't be part of this family if this is what it stands for. I'm moving to another city. Starting fresh, away from all this, madness. Hearing of Alex's decision later, I relayed the events to my mom. She had always been my rock, and even now, her words provided a cold comfort. That's the price of Linda's folly. Her arrogance and stupidity cost her her own sons. Maybe now she'll see the harm she's caused. The fallout was immediate and absolute. Alex followed through on his promise, moving away and cutting ties. Mark was left to deal with the consequences of his actions, his mother's manipulations laying the foundation for a chasm too wide to bridge between them. Life after the dust settled was different. Not easier, but clearer, like I was seeing everything for the first time again. My mom and I had many long talks about it all, sitting on her old, comfy sofa with cups of tea that always seemed to go cold before we finished them. Mom, I started one evening, the sky outside painting a picture of calm I didn't quite feel inside. Do you think I made the right choice? With everything, the divorce, standing up to Linda and Mark like that? My mom set her cup down, turning to look at me with those wise eyes that had seen more of life than I ever wished to. Darling, you did what you had to do. You stood up for yourself, for your dignity. That's more important than staying in a marriage that was built on distrust. The biggest change, besides the obvious, was in Alex. He'd moved to another city, cutting ties with his family. He called me once, just before he left. I can't stay here, not after everything. I need to start fresh, somewhere where every corner doesn't remind me of, all this. I understood. You'll always have a friend in me, Alex. You were the only one who really saw me through all this mess. He chuckled, a sound that held a shadow of our shared troubles. And you, me. Take care of yourself, alright? After hanging up, I couldn't help but feel a pang of loss. Not just for the relationship I thought I had with Mark, but for the family I thought I was part of. Months passed, and life found a new rhythm. My blog started picking up more traction, becoming a space where I could share not just tips on fitness and health, but also personal stories of resilience and starting over. It resonated with people, more than I expected. As I was settling into this new chapter of my life, finding solace in the routine I'd built for me and my boy, my phone rang out of the blue one afternoon. The screen flashed a name I hadn't seen in a while, Linda. My initial instinct was to ignore it, let it go to voicemail, but something, maybe curiosity, or maybe just a desire to finally put it all to bed, made me answer. Hello? Her voice came through, shaky and laced with something that sounded like regret. Erica, I was wondering, could I, could I see him? My grandson? The audacity of her request after everything that had happened stopped me cold. For a moment, I was back in that living room feeling the weight of her accusations all over again. You've got some nerve, Linda, I said, my voice steady but firm. After all the hell you put us through, now you want to play grandma? You didn't even want to see him in him before. She started to cry, mumbling apologies between sobs, trying to explain herself, but I wasn't having any of it. Save your tears, Linda. It's too late for sorries now. But please, I just want to make things right. She pleaded, desperation creeping into her voice. I sighed, a deep, weary sigh. You should have thought of that before. You made your bed. Now, you get to lie in it. Alone. Without waiting for her response, I hung up, the finality of the click echoing through me. It was harsh, maybe, but necessary. A line had been drawn 
and for the first time in a long while, I felt like I was the one in control of where it went. Looking at my son, now a little older and wiser beyond his years, I knew we were going to be okay. We had each other, and a future that was ours to shape.